Tonight, we are in the woods. We are sleeping in these things to <clears throat> see if we can have a rare encounter with one of the most endangered wolves in the world. Few have heard of the story of the red wolf, in part because they think only 20 exist in the wild. But we're here in the woods tonight to figure out what's going on with these red wolves. Check this out. They are literally dead bones. Well, old bones are dead, but they're underneath our hammock. Oh, did you hear that? Uh, so our plan is really simple. We are trying to retrieve a bunch of cameras that have been left out here, remote cameras, that are hoping to capture new wolves. So we're just outside of the wildlife refuge right now, but this is also the roaming area of these red wolves, as well as black bears, so some of the biggest black bears in North America, we've been told. You always want to see a bear, but I don't think you want to see a bear if you're in a hammock three, three feet off the ground. And we both agreed that if the other person gets bared, I'll just say that, the other person can't run away, they have to help. That's our little agreement. It's, it's a safety protocol. Bears don't like people, that's what you say. The thing everybody wants to understand is what's happening to this population of wolves? Why is it declining like it is? And we hope that maybe we'll find some answers with these camera traps. But first, let me give you some background on these wolves. These are considered the most endangered canid in the world. It's also considered the American wolf. But most people who think of wolves probably think of something like this. This is the gray wolf, a formidable predator and the largest wild dog on earth. So let me take a second to compare the two. First, they'd never existed together. Gray wolves were up north and out west, red wolves out east. Coincidentally, coyotes could also fill a niche under the gray wolf's territory, but not where the red wolf was. As far as size goes, the gray wolf is the largest, maxing out at 175 pounds. The red wolf, only about 80 pounds, and the coyote, no bigger than 50. So there was only one wolf exclusive to the United States, the American wolf, the red wolf. Yet it almost went entirely extinct, known only from pelts. Imagine if this was the only way we could learn about this species. Fortunately, that's not entirely the case. As biologists and filmmakers, we were able to capture this image. But many are surprised to hear that back in 1980, it was declared extinct in the wild. That's when they captured the last 17 individuals. These wolves were put into a species survival plan, all of which was intended to save the species. We know all the genetics of these animals and we're trying to maintain the genetic diversity as much as possible. We have around 250 animals under human care in 40 different facilities that participate in the breeding programs for red wolves. And what we call that population is the assurance population to make sure this animal doesn't go extinct. There's 18 wolves back here right now, so there's more wolves back here than there's probably in the wild. <laughs> That's amazing. In 1987, they reintroduced the wolves to Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge, which is where we hope we can find the wolves. But first, we have to pick up the key from my friend Roland Kays at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences and NC State. This is the guy that literally wrote the book on mammals. There's a wolf in there somewhere. Is there? We are trying to get from Roland the locations to the cameras that are set up in wolf country. And there's tons of bear sign. You're gonna have tons of bears on this camera. And there's tons of bear sign in here. Here's your key to unlock the locks. Oh, great. One of the most endangered species of mammals anywhere in the world. We're hoping to catch them on camera. We've just now gotten the key for the remote cams that hopefully have wolves on them. So this is what you're looking for. They look like this. So um, hopefully you'll get some red wolves. Like I said, they're super rare, but this is where they live. We don't have evidence of breeding. If you get any puppies, or if you get any wolves without collars, that's pretty significant. Ooh. Now we had a clear goal, and off we went to collect the cameras. We knew our chances of seeing a wolf in the wild were going to be extremely low because they are so elusive. So instead, we followed the coordinates to the camera traps. Found it. Number one. Two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Seven. Right, number eight. Number nine. Most of them along a path. But a few of them were really hard to get. You gotta be kidding me. Where is it? I see it. You see and it? There's no way we can get it without getting wet. <gasps> Roland. Oh, I got my red one to wear on today. That is spiny. All right. Oh, rod. 
Oh my god. And what the hell? There's another 10. Golden ticket. And the cameras didn't disappoint. These remote cameras picked up a ton of wildlife. They had a lot of those bears we'd heard so much about. They had bobcats. They even had random birds here or there. And then we stumbled on this. That's, that's it. Is that a wolf? That's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, and you can see the collar. That's a collared wolf. Yep, 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 yep. Woo! We got it. You could clearly see the collars of the wolves reflecting the flash of the remote camera. This was so cool to see and realize we were in the same area. Then we stumbled on this image. <gasps> You're kidding me. Oh, that's a wolf. And look, hold on, hold on. Is that one collared? No, I can't see. Well, there's no reflection. That's huge. That'd be huge. And just for reference, that's our feet a few hours after the wolf passed, which I would imagine the scat we found on the trail was from that animal. Oh, just stinky though. Now you might wonder, how can we tell the difference between a coyote and a red wolf? because we know coyotes have finally made it here. Well, to our amateur eyes, it's hard to tell, but Roland and the other biologists seem to think most of them are wolves, but some of them look kind of coyote-ish, and that points to one of the problems. As coyotes invade, lonely wolves will start to hybridize with them. And these are indicators as to why the population is decreasing. Coyotes, hybridization, and people just mistaking coyotes for wolves. Truth is, the problem is complicated. So our journey to find images of these wolves ended in success. Not only did we see a lot of wolves and the wildlife that could support them, we found what appears to be uncollared wolves. In the end, we took these images back to Roland and his camera trap team so they could analyze them in more detail. We also spent more time at the North Carolina Zoo to learn about what they're doing to help with this species' survival. That's another video though, and I'm linking it at the end. And if at this point you're wondering what you can do to help this species, think about this. First, people don't realize that wolves are actually really good for a healthy ecosystem. The wolves won't be eating your chickens, they'll actually get rid of the coyotes, and they'll be keeping deer populations healthy. And finally, the issue is also political. It needs public support. Biologists who are funded to help this species survive need people to be interested and supportive of it. How amazing would it be to have wolves on the landscape again? And if you have a chance to visit a center that is helping, go, show your support, and share this video. The more people know, the better. As I wrap this up, I should note, Jonas and I make this in our free time because we really care about it. My patrons, which support me through Patreon, are making small donations to help me tell these stories. So thank you to you all, and as an added little thing this month, I'm giving away wolf-themed notes for new patrons, so go check that out. Help me tell these important wildlife messages, and we'll see you next week.